now that we've looked at equations a little bit, let's go on to a little different area and try doing absolute values with inequalities. So here in example four, we have the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than 5. Now here it's going to be similar as what we did with the previous examples where we still need to have the positive and the negative value. So we're going to have 2x plus 1 is less than 5 and then we'll have 2x plus 1 is greater than negative 5. Now if you remember, whenever you switch the sign for an inequality, for example like multiplying by negative 1, then you need to flip the inequality sign. So here since it was originally less than 5 and now we changed it to a negative 5, we had to flip the sign. So now let's just continue solving like we normally do. So here with this equation, or this inequality, we need to first subtract the 1, do the same thing on the other side. That gives us 2x is less than 4. Now we just need to divide the 2. That gives us x is less than 2. So there's one part to the solution. Now let's do the same thing over here. We'll subtract 1 from both sides. Now it'll give us 2x is greater than negative 6. It's negative 5 minus another 1 would give us a negative 6. And now divide by 2. That leaves us with x is greater than a negative 3. So there's another part to our solution. So we have a negative 3 and we have a positive 2. Now x is greater than negative 3, so it's not going to equal negative 3, but it's greater than negative 3, and, but it's less than 2. So it's not going to equal 2, but it's less than 2. So x would actually be, could be any value in between negative 3 and 2. Now let's take a look at example 5. So again, we need to look at the positive and the negative side of this absolute value. So we'll have x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 3, and we'll also have x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 3. So remember when we switch the signs, we need to switch the direction of the inequality as well. So now let's first solve this side. So we have x plus 4. So to get x by itself, we need to get rid of that 4. So we'll subtract it from both sides. And that leaves us with x is greater than or equal to a negative 1. So positive 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So there's one part to our solution. Now for this other one, again we just need to get rid of the 4. And then do the same thing to the other side. And that leaves us with x being less than or equal to negative 7. It's negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So here we have negative 1 and negative 7. So we know x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So since it could be equal to, we'll have a closed loop here, but it'll also be greater than negative 1. So it'll go off in that direction. Or x could be less than or equal to negative 7. So since it could be equal to, we'll have a closed loop here as well. But it could also be less than negative 7. So we'll go off in that direction. So that's how you would solve inequalities with absolute values. All right, let's take a look at example six. So we have a student, David, 
who needs to get a score between 88 and 100 on the final exam in order to pass the class. Write an absolute value inequality that would represent this situation. Now before we get to David and his score, let's look at a small example that could give us some insight on how to do this. So say this is our number line and our origin would be right here. Now what if David only needed a score between 3 and negative 3? Well that means that the distance from the origin could be any point in between negative 3 and 3. So for example here at 2 there would be a distance of 2 or here at negative 2 there would be a distance of 2. We don't care what the distance is as long as it's less than 3. Because if the distance was 4, we're getting out of the range here on either side. So here, an example of an absolute value inequality would be the absolute value of x needs to be less than or equal to 3 in order to stay within this range. Now, but for David though, he needs his score to be between 88 and 100. So instead of having negative 3 and 3, he needs to have 88 and 100. Now if you notice, with our original one, negative 3 to 3, our origin is the exact middle point for this inequality. So for us, we need to get the middle point between 88 and 100. Now the way to do that would just be to sum up these two values and divide it by 2, or in other words, get the average. So let's do that. We have 88 plus 100, and then we'll divide it by 2. So when we add 100 plus 88, that gives us 188. And then we need to divide it by 2. So when we do that, we get 94. So for us, our origin, or our middle point, is going to be 94. Now, for us, the distance between 94 and 88 is 6. Now that should be the same case over here as well for the 194, which when you do the subtraction, we do get the same answer. 100 minus 94 is 6. So we know for us, we're going to have some sort of inequality that should be less than or equal to 6, because that's the most that we want to be going on the number line as far as distance goes. Since our middle is the 94, we don't want to go any more than 6, or any more than 6 in this direction. So, what needs to go in here? Well, we need to offset our origin. Normally our origin is 0, but now it's 94. So in order to offset it, we need to subtract the 94. Because, for example, if our score was 94, 94 minus 94 gives us 0, which is where our origin should be. So our absolute value inequality for this situation would be this right here. 94 is our middle point, and we don't want to go any more than 6 above that or below it to be able to stay in this range. So if David could do that, he'll pass his class.